Thank you all for joining us again. Our next presentation is Jonathan and Peter giving an overview of the fairly new KMODS SIG that was just started this year. So thank you all so much. Thank you. Um, so my name is Jonathan Billings and uh, this is Peter. I don't know if you want to say hello. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Hi. Uh, so just a couple, I just want to go over the things that we're going to be talking about. We're going to talk about uh, the status of the SIG right now, some of our goals and motivation, uh, some of the packaging considerations, a progress report, and then some open issues and tasks and the future outlook of the project. And then we'll have some questions. Um, we established this uh, group in June of 2021, and there were uh, three founding members of the group. Um, we uh, have an IRC channel um, on Libera.chat called CentOS KMods. And, you know, we talk fairly infrequently on there, but, you know, it's a good place to catch up if you're interested in finding out what we're doing. Um, we also have biweekly IRC meetings on the uh, CentOS meetings um irc channel and it's on the uh centos calendar so if you're interested in joining that you can join there uh also we have an issue tracker on pegger so check that out the url is right there um and we've got a bunch of different package uh specific trackers also on pegger so if you want to take a look that's where they are um so why are we doing a kmod sig and basically what we wanted to provide were uh, kernel modules that were not included in CentOS Stream. Um, they were disabled or not available in the uh, um, in the, the default CentOS Stream kernel. Um, some of the things are things like uh, kernel modules that have been restricted to only be for specific PCI IDs, such as uh, storage drivers that um, were limited to particular ones in CentOS um, 8 Stream. Um, that were available in previous versions of CentOS. Um, other are ones that are just not enabled in the kernel. And we also wanted to look at some uh, versions that were not released in the version of the kernel in CentOS stream, but added in an up uh, in the newer kernels. Uh, it, so, so people could potentially use the CentOS stream kernel, but still have access to a kernel module in a newer kernel. Um, we One of the decisions that we did make was that we're only going to provide GPL compatible kernels, um, or kernel modules rather, uh, that are, and uh, we also were going to look at ones that were maybe not in the upstream kernel, uh, but this, was, this wasn't going to be our uh, primary focus. But some of the modules that we were looking at were the OpenAFS kernel module and the Vidi for uh, Linux loopback module. We also uh, want, we're either going to work with Apple or some other way of packaging some of the user space tools that are used as part of these for these kernel modules. Uh, for example, for um, uh, WireGuard, uh, have some of those tools available. Uh, one of the things that we would like this group to be able to provide are uh, signed kernel modules. And this would be a requirement if you were going to be running with secure boot enabled. And uh, we have an issue track for this in the CentOS infrastructure um, uh, issue tracker. It's number 307. Uh, we're also looking at being able to provide disk drivers and if, uh, or just, I'm sorry, driver disks images. And if you're not familiar with those, whenever you're installing with Anaconda, you can supply on the command line or in the kickstart. Um, to get a down, download and install a particular driver disk image, which is just a bundled version of the kernel module. And that would give you the ability, for example, to install on hardware that uh, didn't have a driver uh, in CentOS 8 stream, but uh, we provided. Also, we wanted to provide support for the uh, other rebuilds of CentOS, such as Rocky, Alma, and of course, RHEL. Um, we also, one of the things we were thinking about doing is non-GPL kernel modules, um, but this is not a high priority and, you know, Red Hat Legal's got to approve anything. Uh, there's two different considerations we had for packaging them. One was to use DKMS, which is the dynamic kernel module support. Um, 
basically includes the source in the package. And every time you installed a new kernel, it would build, it would compile the, the kernel module. And of course, this required a bunch of extra dependencies. You might not want to have that on a server or a small container. Um, and uh, it rebuilds the kernel module on every single uh, system instead of deploying it to a, multi a large number of systems. So it doesn't really scale well. And of course, any times it breaks, you have to be able to catch it. Otherwise, next time you reboot, you might not even have access to your storage. Uh, the other consideration was to use kmods, which is basically we'd be packaging the kernel module built for a particular kernel. Um, and this doesn't have as many requirements, um, and the kernel's only really built once in CVS, and it, so it shouldn't have as many of the issues that uh, DKMS has, but it does mean that we have to make sure that there's a kernel module available for uh, every installed kernel, or as we'll talk about later, uh, we maintain KABI uh, comp um, compatibility. So I'm going to hand that off to Peter for when we start talking about that. OK, yeah. So the main issue with the KMOD packages is that we, we would have to rebuild them for every single kernel release. And especially with looking at CentOS 3.9, it seems like they are probably going to be a little bit more frequent. Mm -hmm. So that does not really sound like an option, or it's like a little bit of wasting resources building them too often. So what one usually does with Red Hat is using the KABI tracking KMODs. So we only, it's essentially the same as the KMOD packages, but we just rebuild them every time something changes in the kernel. So we reuse them, we reuse an old build as long as possible. For that, you know, probably then the weak modules or weak updates, people call it differently, but that mechanism takes care of that. It checks if the ABI is still compatible and that will just use the old build. Okay, with Red Hat, that was easy because a minor release in RHEL, a minor release, you had got a very strict KABI stability guarantee. So it was easy, just build it once for minor release. It works, rebuild for the next minor release. So the question is, how does it look like in CentOS Stream? We don't have any guarantees anymore. So we did a slight test. So Jonathan, can you please? Yes, thanks. So we tested a few of the packages we already built. So I took 24 packages. I built them once for one kernel and then checked how many of them do I have to rebuild for the next three kernels in CentOS Stream 8. And it turned out the number is quite low. So as you can see here, I only required three rebuilds for one update, two for the next, and seven for the last update. So there's only, on average, you have a chance of 17% only that you need to rebuild. It's quite low. And 13 out of 24 packages actually never required us to do any rebuild. And I actually did some more tests. So they, I even checked some packages even survive to even work after minor updates. So it seems like that's the best way to go. So we need uh, to check. We need to check that. We somehow need to detect when do we need to rebuild, and we want to do that automatically. I don't want to check manually. Do I have to do a rebuild today? No. So what we what I what we did there is we introduced a new uh, repository on, on Pega. There, we just store the the ABI there of the kernel. So that means we get the module file for every kernel released and track it in a Git repo. So that way, I know the ABI of the kernel. And for the package that's done uh, by the RPM build, it's listed as requirements. So now I have what the package requires, the kernel module, and I know what my kernel provides. So I can easily compare these two automatically, and then I can see, do I need a rebuild or not? OK, and here just uh, how that, uh, OK, please go once uh, back again. Jonathan, because here you can see, okay, we how that re repo looks like. We just have different tags for every single kernel that's available for C8, C8S, and C9S. And for the I textures, I think currently x86, Arch64, and PowerPC should be in there as well. So the free we can actually build for in CBS. Okay. So that looks promising, and we probably go that way in the future. So using these. Okay, 
So progress report, what have we done so far? We have not released any packages yet because we thought that it might be a good idea to wait uh, till we are able to sign kernel modules. Uh, but as it turned out, it's not an easy issue to solve. So maybe we change there and maybe we start releasing now without signing them. Because I think that's something that's probably not been, not gonna be solved anymore this year. So yeah, we have to change maybe. Yeah, so what do we already have? And so we have some stuff already in testing. It's not signed, but it's available in testing. There we have some modules available. So Jonathan, please, the next slide. Okay, what do we have? We have an XFAT backport. So if you want to use XFAT on CentOS Stream 8 or CentOS 8, you can already install that. If you want to use WireGuard, it's available in testing as well. Uh, we have the KAFS if, uh, should be available. And Jonathan is currently working on the KSMBD. That's a quite new model. So, but I think that should be available soon as well. Uh, I'm working on, on the NT, uh, NTFS3. That will be available in testing once kernel 5.15 is released plus maybe one, two, three days. Maybe, maybe I'm fast, maybe it just takes a few hours. <laughs> Depends. Okay, these are all already available in testing. We also have some of the older uh, network controllers uh, re uh, enabled that have been disabled by CentOS or Red Hat at some point, some storage controllers. Essentially, we took there uh, the list what currently EL repo is pro providing, and we provide the same kernel modules now for CentOS Stream 8. But of course, always bear in mind, the modules are not signed yet. And last point, we have all modules that have some PCI IDs uh, disabled by RHEL. These are all available as rebuilds with everything enabled again. That's actually a different repository. And now you can see how you can enable them. So we have uh, packages and main packages. That's the first one. So it's just if you install CentOS KMODS release, that is enabled by default. Uh, so far, we need to disable the the, the um, release repository because there's no files there, and otherwise you get an error that it cannot find the repo data. Uh, that's bad. Uh, but hopefully, the next few days we're gonna release something, and then that is fixed. And you can enable CentOS KMODS testing. Then you get access to all modules we currently have in testing for CentOS 8, CentOS Stream 8, and for CentOS Stream 9. Once uh, Infra allows us to push to the network. Or actually, in CentOS Stream 9, I think the testing you can already consume, but you have to add manually a repository there. So it's up to you to add it, but they, the KMODs are already available. Okay, And we have a second, it's the CentOS KMODs release rebuild. There we put all packages that replace. So we rebuild kernel modules that are actually provided by the base kernel, but with some differences. So these we have in a different repository to make clear to every user, okay, now I'm overwriting stuff of the base kernel. That's a different repository, okay. For the open issues and tasks we have to do, uh, number one is quite obvious and it will probably take some time because currently Jonathan and I are mainly working with scripts and other stuff on our, our local systems. At some point, we want to have all that working somewhere, probably on the CentOS CI. So currently, I have a daily script that is running and producing the KABI repository, populating it with probably new kernels, and is then also kicking off another script that will check if any of the rebuild, any of the packages need to be rebuilt. So I don't do anything there. It's just everything is already automatically done. I just have to set it up once for module and then it is done automatically until there is some error, of course. Okay, yeah, so that is probably what we want to do is someone want to have it in CentOS CI and then I don't want to have it like kick it off every day, but for that I think MQTT should work quite nice and subscribe there. Or if it's not, maybe we can also just have it somewhere outside and subscribe to the MQTT provided. But that's not all set yet, but we somehow want to get the stuff we have on our private systems, on public systems. So in the case I or Jonathan are not interested in the SIG anymore, someone else can take over. 
does not mean we are not interested anymore, but it's just better having everything public. It's always better. Okay, good. And of course, oh, under other open issues are the signed kernel modules and the driver disk images. So these are driver disk images for me are not like high priority, but it's we should provide them at some point um, because yeah, some some people might just need them. Okay. And actually, I think we are way too fast. <laughs> But then you have, have plenty of time for questions. And the outlook, the outlook is quite obvious, is a CentOS Stream 9. So that's what we are currently looking at. And that's where we in the future want to prove, yeah, put most of our resources in probably. Mm -hmm. Of course, CentOS Stream 8 is not, not that for us. So like, as I said, NTFS 3 is, will still be provided for CentOS 8 and CentOS Stream 8. So we, so we are still working on that. And I think there was once a question on, on, the, on our issue tracker, how long we intend to support the kernel modules. And um, I, could all, I was only able to, uh, to answer the question from my point of view. And I think my answer was like, as long as, as long as Red Hat is in RHEL is still available and still supported, we are supporting the kernel modules. So easy like that. So as long as CentOS Stream 8 is available and still supported, we will build kernel modules for that one. Especially if everything automated, it's not really a lot of work anymore. Yeah. So as long, once you have done that. But we are looking more at CentOS Stream 9 now. There are some issues still there. So in CentOS Stream 9, you currently cannot build uh, KABI tracking kernel modules. So packages, you cannot build them currently because the, um, the infrastructure is not set up yet. Uh, there are some Baxilla open for that, and I guess someone at Red Hat is working on that. Yeah, so, but that's for, for what we are looking at and what we want to do in the future. Future, sorry, future. Um, yeah, and uh, that's for everyone that now is maybe asking which kernel modules we plan to provide for CentOS Stream 9, it's quite easy. We have an uh, issue open for that. So if you think there's a kernel module you want to have in CentOS Stream 9, just go to that issue and just let us know that you want to have it. Okay, so we have really been way too fast. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do we have, uh, so we are already at the question. So any questions? Yeah. Probably not, not, was not yet that much to report after a few months. There's one question in the Q&A section asking about stream and NVIDIA. Um, uh, you kind of already addressed that, but yeah. You know, maybe. Uh, maybe we could backport the in-kernel NVIDIA if they figure something out to fix things. Um, I know that there has been a lot of work in improving the Novo driver. Um, so if that ends up being better in new kernels, maybe we could try backporting that. But we're certainly not uh, the the, the third-party non-GPL, unless maybe NVIDIA will GPL their kernel module. Who knows? Uh, <laughs> I don't see that as likely, but maybe. Yeah. So. So I think that's the, that's the the so. I think the question comes up quite often about NVIDIA and it's really, it's, it's, I thought about it and I actually have a spec file ready, but it's, uh, it's just all about legal. Mm -hmm. So, but it's because of the legal issue, it's really not a priority for us. And, yeah. and yeah. And, uh, at least on my system, I'm running with CentOS stream eight, I had no issue installing the, the RPM provided by NVIDIA. So yeah. that's working. Yeah. The next so question I, that we have is, uh, you mentioned MQTT. Are you considering using Fedora messaging? That's more of an infrastructure question. Uh, I, I think that's come up a couple times, and I've just not looked into it. I don't know. Do you do you know anything better, more about it? 
Um, not really, because I have to say I'm quite new to, to, to all that stuff. So I have been Fedora user for quite some time, but uh, never really worked on any package development or anything. So uh, I actually, honestly, I don't really know what I could do with Fedora messaging. Yeah, so I need to learn all that stuff first. I need to, that's my main problem is like, I, I'm, I'm still learning what the infrastructure provides me. So I have to look, okay, what do I have? And then decide what, what's best for me to use. But I have to say, it's not easy to know all that stuff after like six months. Right. It takes some time to, to get to know everything. So if Fedora, if the CBS stuff starts emitting messages through Fedora messaging, we could probably use it for tracking updated kernel modules. Or I'm sorry, uh, updated kernels whenever there's a new kernel. Um, but I've not done it, so no. But I can't answer the other question. Um, uh, will we tackle the non-GPL module for OpenAFS at some point? And I actually used to support the OpenAFS kernel module uh, at a previous job. Um, we're not looking at non-GPL uh, kernel modules right now, so it's a lower priority. But the I, I happen to know the OpenAFS Foundation has been working with IBM to GP, uh, tr transfer the OpenAFS kernel module to a GPL licensed uh, kernel module. So once that's happened, Yes, that will be something that we can package and get ready. Um, until that happens, probably will be a really low priority. Um, it's currently licensed under an IBM license, which is it's pseudo free, but uh, still has a lot of questions of whether we, it's something we could package. Um, so I, I want to avoid that issue. Um, the, but the KAFS module that I'm working on, uh, which is the in-kernel kernel module, it does work with AFS. It just doesn't work with the OpenAFS client and it's lacking some uh, tooling issues. Um, so, yeah. Any other questions? Well, if there are no other questions, thank you so much, Peter and Jonathan, for another great presentation.